come for the cocktails, stay for the camera lesson. This is Cocktail Camera. So we just made a classic 1944 Mai Tai. This is the original Mai Tai. And honestly, it's gonna be pretty different from the Mai Tai you order on a cruise ship or a casino or all the other places you might typically order a Mai Tai. It's one of these classic cocktails that's just been really bastardized over time. Unfortunately, when you order a Mai Tai, you're likely gonna be served something with a lot of different fruit and sugar and Nothing quite like the original, which is actually somewhat similar to a margarita. Uh, as you saw in the video, I used several different rums to form my own kind of rum blend for this cocktail. You don't have to do that. It's just something fun I like to do. Uh, but it's served with fresh lime juice, orange liqueur or dry curacao, a little bit of rich simple syrup, which is a two to one simple syrup, and some orja, which is this almond sweetener. But really, it's not too overly complicated, served over crushed ice, and served with a lot of fresh mint as the garnish. Once you make and try a 1944 Mai Tai for yourself, you will join the rest of us in wondering, why do they make this any other way? This is truly so, so good. I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments with questions about my, my herb keeper here. I keep my mint in here. This mint I've had for like four days. It still looks beautiful. Put this in the fridge with some water. It's fantastic. I'll link this in the description. Next, I'm gonna show you how I would photograph a Mai Tai cocktail, but I have gotten some comments on a few tutorials. You know, people calling out like, hey, you're using these really nice studio strobes. They aren't necessarily really nice, but I get your point. Uh, saying, yeah, what if I just have an inexpensive speed light? How would I use this? So this is what we're gonna be working with for the sake of example. So the speed light I am working with for today's video is kind of old at this point. It's a Godox V860 Mark II. I think they're up to Mark III or maybe Mark IV, uh, but still works great. I think it's actually, yeah, this one is made for Fujifilm. So if I wanted to mount this 
on my Sony's hot shoe on the camera, it wouldn't be compatible. But since I'm using this off camera with a wireless trigger, it's gonna work fine. Again, we're going for cheap or inexpensive when it comes to lighting gear for this video. So this flash, I think I got it new for like $150 USD probably get it for less now that it's not like the current model. Uh, this is what's typically called a nano stand. It's a lightweight light stand. Uh, this is like the Manfrotto version, which is probably gonna be a little nicer, maybe a little more expensive. You can get cheaper versions. But generally when it comes to any time you're mounting a piece of gear, you know, several feet off the ground, I recommend not going like the cheapest. Try to go maybe something a little nicer just because you don't want your tech just to fall over in the middle of a shoot. You can certainly use this flash just naked like this with no lighting modifier. It's just gonna be a lot more harsh. It's gonna be more direct light. You're gonna have those hard, intense shadows, which can certainly be a vibe if that's what you're going for, but I want a softer light. So I wanna find like a soft box, something to soften this light to make it bigger. Uh, now I could get some sort of adapter to allow me to use like some of these bigger, nicer studio modifiers. But again, I'm going inexpensive and I'm going mobile. One of my good buddies and fellow food and drink photographers, Anthony Nader, goes by 52 Chefs online. Uh, he showed me this very cool lighting modifier pretty small little pack here that you can throw in a camera bag or backpack. And you pull this out and it's kind of like, you know, those collapsible lighting reflectors, but it's actually a softbox. It's like this big lollipop softbox or pancake. I don't know what the official name is, but basically you just have like a few inches here where you have this kind of translucent material and then there's some kind of reflective material on the inside with like a little kind of strap here and you put your speed light vertical so it's facing up into this softbox. And you just mount it like so and honestly, it's, it's pretty awesome. To make this even more inexpensive, I'm gonna use my Canon Rebel. Uh, I bought this on eBay for like $350, uh, nifty 50 lens, I think like $75 is used. So barely over 400 bucks. Then we've got our cheap speed light and collapsible softbox. So what we're working with here is nothing fancy. Now again, we are using off camera flash here. So I do have a Godox wireless trigger on my hot shoe so I can wirelessly control my flash, adjust the power level, etc. We'll start by closing our window blinds. This will give me more control over the light and the scene, just using the one flash. Also help cut down on reflections in the glassware and all that. So I just have a couple sawhorses here, a wood photography surface by Ericsson Surfaces. Then I'm going to position our light kind of in the corner of our scene, drop it down a few feet. I like leaning into kind of the dark and moody look with a lot of my imagery. So I'm gonna have that in the corner, just get an empty glass and kind of position it how I think I'll want to shoot our cocktail. I always recommend people to light before liquid. So that means not just setting up your lighting, but also just your, your cocktail glass before you pour any liquid, making sure you have your settings, your exposure, everything kind of styled and set up how you want before you add the cocktail. As you can see here, it's looking nice, kind of moody as I want, but there's a bit too much light around the cocktail itself. So I'm gonna flag off the light just to add some shadow on either side of the glass. Now we're looking good, so I'm going to pour our Mai Tai. Same cocktail, same recipe as we made in the beginning of this video. Gonna add in some pebble ice, make sure that looks as pretty as possible, and then get our garnish. So keep fresh mint in the fridge. Mint can be a little tricky because you don't want any wilty mint, or if it's been sitting for a while, it might have little black edges or spots. So you wanna get rid of any of that, make sure it looks nice and healthy and bright green before you photograph it. Just don't want anything to look sad or wilty. Taking a few shots here, liking how it looks, kind of at this 45 degree angle. 
Looking down, the mint is looking really nice. We're getting some light through the glass as well. Overall, pretty happy with how this is going. I like to get some vertical images as well. Be a slightly different angle. So I'm actually going to lower our light even more. I'm gonna to try to get more of a straight on shot and maybe even have this black flag as our background. Just so it's nice and dark, but it's still nice and backlit. So with this, this gives me a little more detail in the glass. I wanna show off kind of the Trader Vic's logo, this kind of anniversary Mai Tai glass. This just gives me another angle without really changing the set a whole lot, maybe lowering my light, changing my shooting direction, but overall, I'm liking how this looks. Here's what I'm looking at. I do like to look pretty often at the back of my camera just to make sure everything is looking exactly how I think it does. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you check out cocktailcamera.com where I have all of these tutorials, resources, and e-courses about beverage photography, how to get into it, how to get started, how to master off-camera flash, all of this stuff. I'm also very active on Instagram, so shoot me a DM at Cocktail Camera. I'd love to help you out if you have any questions around cocktails or photography stuff.